Hey there, this time we're going to be stripping the finish off a of Gibson Les Paul Jr. Uh, so this method in this video is going to be using solvent to remove the finish. And this will only work if you have a nitrocellulose lacquer finish. If you have poly, you might want to check out the, my other video, which is using a heat gun to remove the finish. Uh, so most guitars nowadays have a poly finish. Gibson are one of the only main manufacturers to still be using nitrocellulose. Fender made the switch over from uh, nitrocellulose to poly in 1968. Uh, so now they only use nitrocellulose on a very few of their special edition ones and they'll normally make a big deal about it and tell you that it's got a nitrocellulose finish. Uh, this will actually often be a nitrocellulose finish on top of a poly base coat though. Uh, so if you use the method in this video to strip the finish off one of those, you'll probably still find it's got a poly base coat which then you'll need to use a heat gun to strip off. So you can actually also use a heat gun on nitro as well, uh, but the results aren't quite as good as using the solvents like we're going to in this video. Uh, when you're using a heat gun, you can accidentally end up jarring the wood with the heat gun and you can end up digging the spatula or the scraper, whichever tool you're using, uh, to accidentally dig into the wood and then you'll have to sand out those marks. It typically doesn't come off as clean either. You'll end up having with bits left behind which you'll have to sand. Uh, also, nitrocellulose lacquer is actually flammable too, so you can easily end up scorching the finish itself. It doesn't go off in flames, but it will singe and create a bad smell and can, that can also burn the wood too. Uh, so I'm up for using the solvents because uh, it leaves a really clean finish and it returns the wood to just as it was before it was painted uh, without causing any damage. So the solvent we're going to be using in this video is acetone. So acetone is the same thing as nail varnish remover, uh, just nail varnish remover will typically be quite a low grade, whereas we're using a very pure grade in this video. Uh, you could also use uh, lacquer thinner and there's probably a few other solvents you could use as well, but they're typically all a bit more harmful than acetone. So that being said, you should definitely still wear a respirator with the organic va vapour cartridges in. Uh, because the fumes of acetone are still not good for you and make, they can make you feel bad and probably cause other problems further down the line. Uh, you should also wear gloves too uh, because it can really dry out your hands and again could lead to other problems with your skin and things like that. Uh, but with that said, let's get started. So here is today's patient. Uh, this is a Les Paul Jr. twin pickup and I think it's the single coil edition uh, which they did in 2016 or something. Because yeah, it's got the switch in this weird place down here. Uh, so it's got this textured, well, open pore nitro finish on it, and it's actually in pretty good condition, uh, but the owner would like a TV yellowy finish, so that's what we're going to do, and to do that we need to take the old finish off first. Um, if you're going just a solid colour, you could technically leave this old finish on there, I personally wouldn't, but you can do, uh, but we're going for the TV yellow, so we need to get these pores really exposed, even more than they already are. Uh, so the green filler will stick in that. Uh, so the first step is going to be just taking off all the hardware and I'm going to get on with that now. So Gibson actually lacquer in their nuts on their guitars and basses. So you can see that little line just there. That's actually the bottom of the nut. It ends below the paint, so they put the nut in then paint over the top of it. I don't really know why they do that, because it's a bit of a pain when you need to replace one, because it's actually lacquered in, so there's a lot more chance of damaging the lacquer than there would be on another guitar. Uh, so it's always worth scoring that line there first and scoring the paint so it comes off cleanly rather than causing any damage. Uh, we're replacing the finish anyway, so it doesn't matter too much, but it can actually bring out wood fibres with it too, which we don't want. Uh, so we're going to score it anyway and then knock it out. So here's inside the control cavity. Uh, everything's on a circuit board, so there's no soldering at all, so it's just all these clips. And there we go, that's all the parts off now. And so now we can actually start stripping the paint. Okay, so onto the stripping part. So in this container just over to the right, I've got acetone in there, just neat acetone. Uh, I've got a little, one of those sponges used to do washing up with. Uh, this, is, this can be useful because it's got the scratchy bit which can help rub it off. And it's also got the sponge which will absorb the acetone more and stop it drying out. And then I've also got a towel here, which is going to be cut up into smaller sections uh, just to do most of the work really. That's what's going to do the majority of the wiping on and the wiping off. 
uh, but after a while they get covered in paint and you have to use a new bit so that's why it's such a big towel and why it's going to be cut into loads of pieces um, and then I put these obviously this plastic sheeting underneath uh, this is a type of plastic that doesn't get melted by the acetone because that's what you have to be careful with because uh, acetone melts a lot of different types of plastic uh, but this is the one that's okay and I think uh, if I remember right these gloves are okay too which are in obviously a very manly colour so we're going to get started now and we're just going to be dipping it in the sponge, applying it to that, then rubbing it off with the towel. So you can see it's just starting to take the clear off now and getting into the colour coats. That's all there is really to it. Just keep rubbing at it. And then certain bits I don't want to uh, get this on, like the side dots of the neck. And obviously the headstock face too, because we don't need to change the colour of that or the look. So you can see it goes nice and quickly. I've been using a couple of other tools also just to help bring it off a bit quicker. So I've just been using a razor blade, a standing knife blade, as a scraper. Uh, and this is okay, but you have to be careful not to dig in because you don't want to damage the wood and end up having to do more work sanding out marks. Uh, so just use it lightly. And I've also got this, which is like the very much like the pan scour thing we're using, except it's a little bit more aggressive, it's more abrasive, and that's really speeded things up. That brings it off, but it does get clogged quickly. Uh, so we're just going to carry on going like we are. Uh, again, I don't want to touch these side dots up here, so I'm going to do this uh, separately. Probably mask this off when I get closer to it, and and then I can start doing the sides. And here's the top mostly done. Uh, I'll need a little bit of cleaning up after there's a few little touches like it's a slightly darker bit there that looks like a bit of clear left there so we'll tack those bits a bit later but now I'm going to move over to the back and start it all over again on that. Uh, you can see I did put some masking tape down to protect the side dots uh, because if I got them it could have melted them and I'm going to have to be especially careful when I get up to the headstock as well. So I'm going to turn it over now. So as I've been working on the front the back has obviously got the one-offs from the front which Oh, yeah, and I was expecting. Uh, and you can see that's made it actually a job a bit easier because it's already been soaking into this, so it's going to come off a bit easier because it's been soaking into it. Uh, so that's what we're going to start doing now. You can see down here, I've just been picking it up my fingernail, it's already down to this.
that's the front back and sides done now on the body so it's just a neck to go uh, one extra precaution i like to take is when working around the neck joint area is to not let any excess acetone flow inside to the joint or on the joint sit on the joint uh, just because it could uh, potentially soften the glue a bit because they use tight bond glue uh, for gluing the neck in and that acetone could potentially eat into it a little bit uh, it shouldn't be able to get in there anyway because it's a tight joint but it's just worth being careful so i just used less acetone in this area and always kept it flowing away from it so i'd hold it up like this if i was working on this side so it flows down rather than into the joint and that should be, should be fine then okay uh, so i'm going to move on to the neck now so moving on to the neck i've actually done the side of the headstock down here uh, just with a scraper I didn't use any solvent on this just because I was worried about it getting onto the front of the headstock and ruining the logo there. Uh, so I've done that with a scraper and on the end here, the very end, I've used uh, some solvent but very gas stone, but very um, sparingly. And same on the back of the headstock because I didn't want it running through uh, the tuner holes or over the side. I've actually blocked, blocked the tuners up and taped off the other side as well. Uh, but there's still a possibility it could get either through that or around the edges. So I've used very little solvent around that, as little as I can anyway. And now we're going to do a similar type of thing with the neck. We don't use too much to end up, it might flow under this masking tape and get on the side dots, which will ruin them then. Um, but this should offer a good barrier, really. The tape, it should be better than having nothing there. And I've got the neck up in this position so the acetone can run down like this rather than running in. So I'll probably start on this area here so then I'll be running straight down and then do this area last. So now I flip the neck over and I'm doing the treble side. But the neck goes nice and quickly just because it's a, not a flat surface and it's a bit thinner as well. And the back was the worst bit and it was quite thick on there. Yeah, the top wasn't too bad. But these little um, scratchy things, scotch bite pads, have really helped. Uh, sometimes they, the finish can come off easier, sometimes it can be a bit harder. This one's a bit more stubborn. But this one, this scotch bite is dealing with it nicely. And finally, we have all the finish off. Uh, these darker areas here are actually just wet spots. There's no lacquer left there still. And you can see the headstock survived. And the side dots are all fine too. I've actually just scraped the lacquer from around this, just using a dry scraper, uh, no acetone, uh, just to get the old lacquer off from around the side dots, because obviously that area was unstripped before. It was just clear, so it didn't really matter, but I'd rather prefer to take everything off just in case it got affected by the acetone and gave up some of its adhesion. Uh, so all the sides are done as well. And here's the back. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do now is scrub the whole thing with a coarse grade of steel wool and I'm going to use it dry. Uh, I could have been using steel wool this whole time uh, to apply the acetone and that would have actually worked quicker but I just really don't like using steel wool in the workshop because it gets uh, metal fragments can get all over the place and then they'll end up on customers guitars pickups and things like that. So I'm actually going to use the steel wool outside uh, and it's obviously not going to be for half as long as we just spent on this just because it's just going to be a quick rough up and the idea of that is just to pull any grain filler out of the pores. Uh, the pump might not have been grain filler on this to be honest but it, the clear lacquer is definitely stuck in there still. Uh, so we want to pull all of that out so we've got a nice exposed pores for our grain filler when we come to do the TV yellow later on which will be in a different video. I'm also going to make sure I scrub out all of the numbers uh, on the serial number and the Made in USA writing because otherwise that could get filled in when we put the new finish on. And here it is now fully stripped. I've actually given it a sanding with 180 and then 240 paper as well, just because I wasn't very happy with the kind of standards it was in the first place. Uh, some of the contours were a little bit off and there was a quite a big bump around here. This area just slipped down because of the neck angle. But there was actually a bump going this way. So it would, it would have looked wrong when it got to gloss finish on it, you'd have seen it. So I've sanded that flat now and block sanded everything else to get it all nice and flat. And then done the wire wooling, like I said, to open the grain. I'll show you in a minute how you can see the open grain in the white light. You can't really tell at the moment. Uh, here's a shot of the back. So that's come out nicely. So I'll just show you the open grain if I can, by holding it up to the light. Yeah, you should be able to see that there, especially near the control cavity area where the light's catching it. You can see it's nice and open now, which is what we want, because that's going to get filled later on. 
and that's going to create the contrasting look we want with the TP yellow finish. That's all for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure to like it. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. Um, if you have any questions on any of the process I've done today on this video, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be glad to get back to you. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.